Okay, now this video, this video will be different because um, this machine is not actually owned by me, but is owned by the YouTuber known as I'm a Junk Collector. His real name is Don. Um, you know, maybe some of you may have heard of him and saw some of his videos. He has some tape recorders, such as a wall and sack cassette recorder. Um, he has a, a Sony TC uh, 105A, like I do. Anyway. This machine he wanted me to fix for him, he said the motor would run, but that there was no audio. So I fixed it up, and the uh, amp is working, there was a few leaky capacitors, as expected, so let's see how it operates and how it sounds. Here's a leather case, you have a place to put, you can, there's an external power supply you can use, but it, I tried it and it didn't seem to work, um, and you would put a microphone in the other. This is the um, AC adapter it had with it. It's pretty neat looking. It's got one of these switches on the side and has a double jack that looks just like a mic and remote jack, but it's not. Well, I was wrong. The power supply does work. You can turn it on and off by this switch. Although sometimes you have to fiddle with the cord because a cord is one of those is one of those intermittent cords where it's kind of loose inside the cord, you know, whenever you wiggle it around. Here is the manual. But then unfolds and reveals the full size. Opens up there with the specifications. Like that. This machine is AC bias, and one neat little thing, it tells you right away. Amongst where it says those things, the tape speed and the head and the record system, AC bias. Now this looks like it would be a 3 inch rear to rear recorder. 3 inch reels fit nice inside the case, but think again. Take the door off and it can use 5 inch reels. I want to use this Clericon microphone to make the recordings. There's a mic and remote plug. When you record, there's a little thing you have to push down as you slide that over. It's kind of tricky. You have to push that down as you move it over. And then you can turn it on with the remote switch. This thing picks up pretty good when the level is set high. The level is set at 5 right now. It's overdriving a little bit. Let's turn it down a little bit. Around uh, 3. Watch me switch the speed on this recorder. Okay, I'm now recording at 1 7 8 inches per you know what. You know what is second. I'm recording at 1 and 7 8 inches per second. The audio quality isn't as good, but I do appreciate having an actual switch instead of having to fumble around with replacing the capstan sleeve. Let's go back to three and three fourths and stop the recording. Rewind. Turn it on the remote switch. This thing picks up pretty good when the level is set high. The level is set at five right now. It's overdriving a little bit. Let's turn it down a little bit. Around uh, three. Okay, um, I'm recording on the Hilton model T dot TRT 635. There's a machine fixed for I'm a junk collector on YouTube. That's is at three three four IPS, and then you can switch the speed. So watch me switch the speed on this recorder. Okay, I'm now recording at one seven eighths inches per you know what. You know what is working. I'm recording at one and seven eighths. Has a lot of wow and flutter at one and seven eighths. Is good, but I do appreciate having an actual switch instead of having to fumble around with replacing a capstan sleeve. Go back to three and three fourths and stop the recording. Of course, it sounds a lot better at three and three fourths. The speed is very bad at one and seven eighths. Also, on the side, there's a switch for fast forwarding. Now let's hear how it recorded music off another tape.
unfortunately, it does have wow and flutter in the audio. You know, so it was oh, 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 oh. ah. Hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, I'm hoping the um, speed stability will be improved now. I'm not sure though. I did some more cleaning on the capstan drive on the idler there. Okay, but in the meantime, I can show how the mechanics are in this. Right here, you can notice the capstan flywheel, or the capstan, and then there's a capstan flywheel. There's also an idler. And then down inside, down inside, you can see a motor down in there. Right there, there's a motor to the motor shaft. And now, watch whenever I move the speed switch, the motor shifts positions. You notice on the shaft has two different diameter spindles. And that's so that um, when it drives the idler slash flywheel and changes speed, changes, you know, switches the motor to change the speed that way. It's a pretty neat little design. And then also, this other drive stuff shown. We got we got belts and idlers in this machine. Whenever we play, got the capstan and the pinch really going like normal. Then over there on the next to the capstan there's a little part that's moving this wheel here, which is pushing against the belt on there, goes up there and goes to the clutch mechanism on the take up reel. And then when we go into fast forward, pushes that idler there onto the main idler and then pushes it onto the bottom part of the take up reel where it's not on the clutch part. And then in rewind, this plastic wheel here pushes against that idler, runs the belt over to the rewind, to the supply reel. You also see the, uh, the classic vintage circuitry inside it, germanium transistors. There's one of the capacitors I replaced right there, another one of them right there, another one right there, and another shiny one right there. Another one there, and another shiny one there. And right there is the AC bias coil. There's a, even an old mica capacitor in there, I think it's for the bias oscillator. Is the speed better now? Let's turn on the radio. Okay, now I hope you enjoyed the long, 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 over 10 minute video. Oh my gosh, look at this picture of me. This is just crazy.